chip no more. Mm. There it is. <laughs> Easy Steve. And and we once again we've talked about this in the past, but I feel like hey, if they're asking, let's let's give it to him again, even if it's just a short, quick, uh, quick statement. But easy, Steve, sup, Lonzo? Do you know about Mr. Mike Klein? Of yeah, course, I you do. Mike. I'm, I'm we've talked Mike about Mike. We've talked to Mike. Tell Mike everybody Klein. again who Mike is. Remind everybody. Mike was a uh, head of business affairs at the Ruthless Records. Um, Jerry told me he was a uh, Israeli soldier, bad dude, uh, not to be fucked with. He's the only guy I knew everywhere. To, he wore slacks. And combat boots every fucking time. I'm sorry. Damn, that's a hard mother. Don't don't mess with that dude. He got slacks and combat boots on. Okay, that's what I that's what I remember about him. He had them them them, them tactical boots. Okay, you know uh, them tactical shoes that the cop be wearing, like yeah. boot top with tennis shoes. I, yeah, yeah, that's what I remember Damn. about him. Okay, yeah, and he was a badass apparently, and he was the reason he was one of the reasons that should kept a distance from what right. I understand. I, that that was my understanding as well. Um, he's supposed to be Israeli secret service, Israeli secret forces. Um, can't, I can't verify that, but I, I, I can go by it. All I can go by is what I was told. He seemed like a real cool guy, you know, real cool. You know, he knew everybody. Uh, super cool dude. He reminded me of homeboy Jake from um, Scandal. Oh, okay. Remember Scandal? He he looked he looked like Jake from mm -hmm. Scandal. Slim, yeah. Uh, dark haired cat, uh, about the same height. But, you know, just, you know, new shit. It is new shit. <laughs> Damn. Oh, these questions are coming in, and, and I'm loving it because I'm a, I'm a hip-hop nerd myself, and I, and I know where you guys are going with this. But let's keep it going with the questions. Um, Vada says, Lonzo, can you talk about Uzi Brothers and Yomo, a.k.a. Dezo Daz? Dezo Daz. Uzi Brothers. The Uzi Brothers were some brothers that uh, I talked to them all the time, in fact. Um... Uh, two of them, two of them have passed on. Bob Dog and Ken, the drummer, passed on. The Uzi Brothers used to be used to play at a club here in L.A. called the uh, um, the uh, Name of the Game, and every week they'd met my bass speakers. Uh, when I was I wasn't DJing that much, and they had a they had a funk band, and they used to met my bass speakers every weekend. I charged them like 35, 40 bucks a week to rent the speakers, and uh, after N.W. after Dre and them left. I brought them on board to be my backup man and my backup in case somebody tries some dumb shit. And uh, we still cool today. I mean, it was funny because at that time we had a few issues because everybody didn't understand the music game. And um, I'm bringing people. And again, you got with a band or you got with a bunch of people. That's a lot of responsibility. You got to get seven, eight people to the airport. You got to feed seven, eight people every day. Three times a day, and they just got really crazy. And uh, one time, we got steered by a promoter, and they brought a, one of their buddies came on. He wanted to come with us, and uh, he came on. He had he had a bootleg ticket, but when he came back, the bootleg ticket wasn't working no more. I'd leave his ass. I'd leave his ass and left his ass in Kentucky. He had to get home the best way he could. He eventually made it, but it, it, it kind of fell out. No, nobody really fell out, but they was kind of upset. But I wasn't spending my money to bring his ass home. I wasn't doing that. Um, Dezo Daz, uh, Yomo, I see Yomo all the time. Me and Yomo have been talking about doing some things together, um, in the last past, shit, last past couple of months, right, right, uh, right when the pandemic started to calm down. I haven't talked to him lately, but, um, Yomo, Yomo, I mean, he's a cool brother. Um, uh, he's a, what is, he is a grip now, movie grip. So, uh, Dezo Daz. I want to say I know the name, but I don't. I can't recall. He, he probably watching the show. He'll cuss my ass out. I don't have any real stories with Dizzle Daz, so okay. I can't. I know him, but I can't. I ain't got no stories with him. I don't have stories okay. with everybody. Yeah, no, hey. And like you said, you ain't about to fake the funk to make it sound like you do. I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna make up some shit just to just to uh, keep get, make some content. Here's a name that I've never heard of in my life. Uh, Mr. Jody Four One Nine asked Lonzo was. Walter Yetnikoff in charge of CBS Records when you were there? Do you know uh, what I mean? Walter, Walter, he was a CEO of CBS Records at one time. I don't know. I was I was dealing, at that time when I was dealing with CBS, I dealt with Larkin Arnold. That was my executive producer. I didn't meet anybody else higher than him. Um, I was so busy trying to get the album out, trying to make, uh, make the fly that sounded like Free World by Jesse Johnson. I was trying to get my check, so I never met. I, I met Larkin Arnold, and that was pretty. And the secretaries around there. That was pretty much it. 
Okay. Here's a name that I do know, an RIP to him. I know he met a very uh, untimely death. It's a really sad story, actually. Uh, Mr. Stanford asks, RIP DJ Train. Alonzo, any train stories? Not really. Man, trains come by the house, hang out, but by the time I was always, I was very busy back in the days. I was running back and forth to McCullough, dropping off records. I do know um, he passed. Um, he was the DJ for JJ Fad, correct? Yeah, he was DJ yep. for JJ Fad. And uh, we passed um, Jerry Carpenter up to the office and take his family some money to help uh, help help with the, with his, with his uh, funeral services. That I do know. Um, I, yeah. to, I, I didn't go to his funeral, but I was able to. I went to the repast and dropped some money on the family on behalf of Ruthless. 